welcome to my essential SBT video. I have produced a website that uh, tries to show how to use uh, SBT. We are gonna try and go from the practical side of it um, rather than the theoretical side of it. So we should get a Docker image running, do some TDD with Scala test, do some modules, and here we go. So we open up a terminal. Uh, in that terminal, we're gonna start copying and pasting the commands that are in the article. Uh, the first command we'd run is sbt compile. Uh, you'll notice that this will take a while to run because of the first time. The first run is always the slowest. So sbt will download, sbt binary will download the rest of the sbt uh, dependencies and then it will download uh, the Scala compiler for the default version of Scala 2.10 and then it's going to compile the sources after that we're going to try uh, running SBT in the watch mode whereby when we change the source file uh, it will automatically uh, recompile the project. So we run SBT in one terminal. To do the watching. And in another terminal, we're going to uh, create a file, a source file, a Scala file, which we're even going to paste. And then you notice that it's going to begin compilation. But again, as this is the first compilation of this source file, it's going to have to compile the. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to compile the uh, Scala compiler interface for SBT. Because SB SBT. Uh, is only one of the um, build tools that you can use with Scala. You can use many others, but SBT is the de facto one. Um, we're running on a Linux VM here, which uh, is a bit slower than a Mac. So here we go, it's compiled, the source file. Next, we're gonna run the app, and we're gonna run it continuously. So in SBT we can use the SBT console but in this case I'm keeping it simple and just using the uh, Unix shell so I'm gonna modify the source file just wait for it to do the first run and we can see it works the next one is going to be well we make the change we said and it's going to recompile the file again it's really slow for SBT because it's on a VM. We press enter to exit the automatically restarting console. Um, now we're gonna put in Scala test so we can do testing and also do the testing in watch mode. I'm just gonna wait for it to actually uh, start up. But re in, in a very realistic use case, you would actually be running SBT uh, constantly and then just entering these commands as, as you need them. So it's going to download some sources. You'll notice that includes the Scala version in there, uh, underscore 2.10. This is why we have uh, two uh, percent signs in the build definition. Next, we're going to actually create the test. And it will run automatically, but it's going to fail because uh, we're doing a TDD. So see a failing test. Then the next thing we'll do is fix it. Um, I have a, s There's a slight error in there so um, that I just made, uh, which means I'll have to redo the
set behaves differently on Mac compared to Linux. So I'm going to just recreate the test. And I'm going to modify the set command a little bit. So that is going to say, it's going to replace the question marks. And now you'll notice that the test is, uh, you'll notice the test has passed. And everything was successful. Next step, we'll use Scala 2.12.1. Uh, just press enter again, exit the console. Um, then we're going to add SBT native plugin. Then we're going to enable it for this project, so the root project. And we're going to use it to package a zip file with all the libraries that are needed to run the app, in which case it's just Scala. Uh, again, this one will take a bit of time. Uh, the reason is because plugins have their own dependencies. But again, this is this is the first run. So as a beginning of package, I can let you build uh, to multiple targets quite easily. We'll show how to do doc and how to do zip file. Uh, SBT native package is also something you use for uh, building play framework apps. So you can see it downloading, a bunch of stuff it depends on. Uh, also notice that we changed the Scala version, so it's going to re-download the Scala library. It's going to re-download Scala test for 2.12, recompile the compiler interface, and finally build the package. Now we'll just try and run the package. And that's it, it definitely works. Great. So dockerizing your app. Uh, this command again was for Mac, but it works just fine on Linux as well. We're going to publish a local Docker. Container. And then we're just gonna run it. Yeah, if you want to know how to customize it, obviously go to SBT native package of docs. Next, uh, we're gonna add a submodule. The submodule is a logical unit. Um, submodules are quite confusing to newcomers, so we're gonna keep it very simple. Submodule should just contain um, independent functionality. So a submodule will contain its own sources and its own tests, stuff like that, its own dependencies, and it can also be built for different Scala versions, for instance. Next, we're gonna yeah add Scala 2.12. Gonna add Scala test. So each each module, each project has its own. Uh, settings. So we're just going to do TDD on this particular module. This BT test for Fizzbuzz project. Yeah, instead of creating the test first, we'll just create the main class but not implemented and then add the test against that main against that um, main sources class. And get the triple question marks just for an exception in Scala. So this is very, very useful to, you know, kind of create puzzles where you can say, you know, this is the type, but I don't have anything to give you back in return. So you can see the test failing, and next thing is we'll fix the test. But uh, now I remembered that I did do this uh, small mistake with rejects. I'm just going to open up a text editor to fix that. Uh, Ubuntu can be a bit confusing, frankly. Okay, uh, just yeah, delete that, delete that. Okay, all nicely done. We'll just see what happens again. 
tests now it passes obviously in real case scenario we would add more tests because uh, this is an incomplete implementation what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make the main app the, the main project depend on the sub project or the sub module so that we can reuse the functionality here we'll replace the main body with uh, something that accepts command line argument so you can see what's going on uh, and through SBT we're gonna run the app obviously it's much more effective to run it in a SBT console which I'll show you later it's quite important to explicitly name things because SBT gives you lots of uh, gives you lots of stuff up front so the name of the project is actually based on this directory right now which is not a good practice so yeah the app runs gives us back one two three if you run SBT now we'll do it in uh, now we'll do it in console mode Just gonna run it in console mode so that you know we can see it working. Great. Now uh, we had to give it a name, give it a version. Then the last example we'll do is uh, we'll add. JSUP, which lets you uh, scrape the web, and we're gonna run SBT again. And in that SBT, we're just gonna run the main class, which is going to be the uh, the previous class, the Fizzbuzz main app, and that will fail with, uh, I believe, a new illegal argument exception, because uh, we're not giving any arguments to this app right now. It's gonna download JSUP as well, so you know when it compiles, it figures everything out for you automatically. So yeah, uh, no such element exception. Okay, so last thing is yeah, we just go into the watch mode, and we're gonna add this bit of code. We're gonna replace the app with a uh, new app. Which is going to get BBC News headlines. So, yeah, today a bit of an unfortunate day. A man accused of 100 million fraud. Wow. And that's it. Thank you very much.